Hi everybody, today I wanted to talk about redoing an old breeding project that I had finished a couple years ago, which was an all breed project. Horse recently introduced a new breed to the game, that was the Carrybog Pony. This is my Carrybog Pony that I won from the memory event. It's a mouse gray mare. I ended up bolting her from a stallion to a mare actually, so I could start like a little purebred line. When I heard that horse would be re releasing a new breed, I realized that my previously finished all breed project would now no longer be all breed. What an all breed project is, you just take all the light horse and pony breeds in the game, you keep breeding them together, almost like a bottleneck sort of challenge. And then in the end, you get this one horse. And when you look back through its family tree, you'll be able to find that it has all the light horse and pony breeds on the game in its lineage. There's no true benefit to having an all breed horse because only the top five percentage or top five breeds with the highest percentages will actually show in the genetics tab. So this is the genetics tab. It will only show five breeds in here and then any other breeds. If they're too low of a percentage, they won't show at all because only the five highest will show. Also, there isn't really much of a benefit in terms of skills. You end up with super evenly distributed skills, which doesn't do you much good in competitions. However, I thought this was a really cool project at the time. I had heard of a couple other players who had also completed the project. I really enjoy crossbreeding. I like non-mainstream projects because I can set my own goals, my own deadlines. You can put your own twists on it if you want to to make it your own to make it as easy or as challenging as you like so in february of 2016 i started my old my all breed project what i did with mine i'll show you the spreadsheet that i put together for it this is a redone spreadsheet the original spreadsheet i had looked like an absolute mess so i'm not going to show you what that one looked like because it was terrible what i did with my project i decided that i wanted to start with a original 350 to 351 0.2 GP foundation. All the starter horses, the actual foundations of the project are literally all foundation horses. I just thought that would be kind of a fun twist on the project just to start with original GP foundations. And I also thought it would be a lot easier to track the GP progress that way because I'm starting with horses that are within one point genetic potential away from each other. Whereas if you start with just regular purebreds, you would have to go out, buy up horses with similar genetic potential. Or if you end up starting with the rolling gain foundations, that would be an absolute pain trying to go around and finding a foundations in general and then b making sure that all those rolling gains have about the same gp I also really wanted to start with purebreds just because I thought it would be easier in terms of organization. I know exactly which horses to pair up. I know what breeds I have. If you're starting with a crossbred, that's fine if you want to. You won't have to produce as many generations as what I did here because it ended up being something like seven-ish generations because this Gen 6 horse here was actually bred to a Gen 5. It just, you know, kind of because I didn't have an even amount of foundations to start with, but it's just easier to start with purebreds, I think, because if you're starting with a crossbred, you have to go through and find out which breeds that you're missing. It it just sounded like too much of a hassle to me. I thought it would be fun to start with purebred foundations. And that's what I did. I had to go through, buy up a bunch of original GP foundations. Luckily, this was kind of right about the time when Horse was phasing out the original GPs. And they were pretty much every foundation since November 2015. I think that's been introduced to the game has been rolling gain. I think that started in November 2015. So luckily, you know, there were still quite a few original GP founties in the sales at the time. I bought them. I started with them as my foundation horses and I started my all breed project. About six months later, after keeping track of it in a spreadsheet, I wrote a mini blog about it in my EC form. It wasn't really that great, but I still have it posted in my EC form. I ended up with my all breed horse. This is United as one. She ended up being a Holsteiner filly. I wasn't purposely breeding for a Holsteiner. I was purposely breeding for a riding horse at the end because I really wanted this particular golden apple coat for my horse. It's for a riding horse species, which meant that I couldn't have a pony as my final horse. I just wanted this coat because I thought it kind of represented all the horse breeds, all the pony breeds. So that was my only goal for the end horse. It just had to be a horse breed so I could put this golden apple coat on it. Now, because I did start with all original 350, 351.2 GP foundations, 
her GP still ended up really low. It was only 589. And that was with those auto gains that you kind of get because I was working with such low GP. I was probably getting something like 20 GP gain at the time, just automatically between generations. I'm not even sure what I get now because the top GP is so much higher. If you look at her genetics, her they're fairly evenly distributed just because you have all those breeds in there, except for Trot. That's like fairly lower than all the others. It's only at 61 when the next one up from that is Gallup at 96. And then, like I said, it'll only show the top five highest breeds in her in her genetics and these are the five breeds that ended up showing now since horses released the carry bog uh, united as one is no longer an all breed horse she's missing a carry bog in her family tree in her breed history i suppose i could take the easy way out just breed her to my carry bog foundation if i wanted to do that but i really enjoy long-term projects and i've been without one of those for a while so i thought this would be a good chance to kind of redo my all breed project i have a couple issues now that i didn't have in the past one of which is that one of my original foundations that i used which was uh where is she this girl here look at me if we look at her she is actually a unicorn. I don't know why I did that. She is a unicorn. At the time I did this project, it was possible to breed unicorns to non-unicorns. You can no longer do that. I had to go out and I bought up a foundation nab stripper, although it's a rolling gain because all the original GP foundation nab nab strippers now are really expensive and I didn't really want to pay that much just to get one for a project like this. It is rolling gain. I didn't want to use rolling gains. However, I've also since acquired a quarter pony foundation that's a rolling gain because when I was buying up foundations originally for this project, the only foundation I could not get my hands on was a quarter pony because they were quite rare. The ones that were in the sales were pretty expensive and I ended up using a public cover for that one. If you're kind of asking why I did even want to own all these horses instead of just using public covers, that would have been much easier. Well, I didn't want to have to worry about if the, if the owner left the game, their account was deleted, that horse would show up as a disappeared horse in the family tree. I didn't want that to happen. So I I wanted to own all the horses myself. I thought it would be more challenging to have to breed each one myself and blot them up and everything. So I've since acquired a quarter pony foundation in the sales that is of course rolling gain, unfortunately. However, I guess the point of using rolling gains is moot anyway, because any breeds we get from here on out are going to be rolling gains. I mean, my carry bog pony is a rolling gain. Her GP is 3,655. It's kind of outrageous, but this is just a for fun project. I thought I would kind of mention this. Um, this would be a good opportunity to talk about crossbreeding some more, mostly in terms of breed determination, because stats aren't going to mean much of anything in this project. They're all just going to end up willy nilly anyway, but if you guys would like to see more on my project on how I end up progressing with it, let me know. I don't mind sharing that some more. Like I said, it'd be a good opportunity to talk about breed determination. Also, if any of you guys maybe like doing crossbreeding or trying non-mainstream projects, this might be a project you could want to try. You don't have to start with foundations like I'm doing. You don't even have to start with purebreds if you want. You can start with crossbreds. Although I mentioned earlier, I think just in terms of organization, starting with purebreds is much easier. Or maybe some of you have already completed this project. I know I definitely wasn't the first because I got the idea of doing it from a few other players who had already completed it. So let me know if you guys would like to see some more of this project in the future. I can kind of, you know, keep you updated with my progress with that. Let me know if you might end up trying this as well. You're kind of completing it along with me. Just uh, let me know if this sounds interesting to you. Uh, thank you for joining me today, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.